Senator Cordy. Thank you very much, Speaker. Senator Gold, I'd like to follow up on a question that I asked in this chamber on September 30th. In my question, I raised concerns about the omission in the most recent speech from the throne of the government's commitment to eliminate all long-term boil water advisories on public water systems on First Nations and other Indigenous communities on reserve by March of 2021. When I asked if the government is still committed to achieving this goal by that date, you said, I've been advised that the government is working towards Towards the goal of ending all long-term boil water advisories on First Nations by March 2021, so there's no waffling on that point. Minister Miller confirmed yesterday that this deadline will not be met. He's been very upfront and he said that he has a duty to get this done, which is a refreshing comment to come from a minister of any political stripe. But my questions are, has the government maintained open and transparent communication with each community regarding project plans? Are they kept fully informed about progress on each uh, progress on each project? And are they fully informed and consulted on each project and the timeline? That sounds like a lot of questions, but basically I'm wondering whether or not the Indigenous communities have been included and in, in being informed with updates on the progress that's being made for safe drinking water on their in their communities thank you gold senator cordy thank you for your question and the important though disturbing uh, facts that underlie it and indeed uh the, the minister was candid and took full responsibility uh even though so much of this is out of his personal control uh, for the failure uh, to have fully reached uh, the targets that were promised uh some years ago and reaffirmed by me in the, in this chamber uh, though uh, not all uh, advisories will be lifted, tremendous progress has been made. To your question, the government both remains steadfast in working to uh, end all long-term drink drinking water advisories and is working in partnership with First Nations communities to ensure uh, that that uh, happens. I've been advised that in every community with a long-term drinking water advisory, there is a project team and an action plan and, uh, and collaboration with the community in order to address the particularities and the uh, of those communities, and they vary dramatically, as you would expect, from community to community. And indeed, the government recently announced $1.5 billion in new funding. I could break that down for you, um, but uh, it, 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 uh, it, 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 uh, it focuses on uh, the continued work necessary to lift all long-term drinking water advisories on public systems on reserves and long-term support to uh, increase the maintenance, uh, support for maintenance and operations of the infrastructure that are on reserves and uh, another half a billion dollars to continue work to fund infrastructure projects on reserves. As to date, as of this date, the government has lifted 97 long-term advisories and prevented 171 short-term advisories from becoming long-term. But as the minister pointed out, and with regret, uh, there remains work to do. Senator Cordy, did you wish to ask a supplementary? Yes, please. And you're, you're correct, Senator Gold, and the government did lift 97 long-term boil advisories, and uh, they, they deserve to be commended for these efforts. There are still 59 advisories still in effect, but you're absolutely right. They do deserve credit. That's a lot of uh, advisories, uh, long-term boil advisories lifted still work to be done, however. So the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted every facet of our lives in Canada, uh, and the minister has uh, stated that it has affected the completion of many of these projects, many of the uh, water projects on, in Indigenous communities. Has the pandemic also hampered the planning process? I did listen to the minister yesterday, and he spoke about the challenges of get, doing the 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 work itself, but has it affected the planning process or can you assure us that the plans are ready to go in each uh, in each community or, or how many communities so that uh, the next step in the spring, hopefully the, the shovels are ready to go in the ground. Thank you. Senator Gold. Well, Senator, thank you. I, uh, uh, even if I knew this, the answers, uh, I wish I could, I wish I had the answers and, and that the answers were that there was absolutely no breakdown or, 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 or delay caused by the pandemic uh, on planning. I don't know the answer, but it, 
but the truth is that this pandemic has slowed many things down and it would not be unreasonable to assume that some of the planning in some communities uh, may uh, be uh, compromised. But I don't know the specific answer. What I do know is that the government remains steadfast and committed to solving this problem as it's been trying to do and continues to try to do. And I know that it's working uh, closely with, the, uh, with, with in each and individual community to find the best solutions uh, and to move as quickly as possible under these rather difficult circumstances. Thank you.